Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm Steve Jordans. You may know me as the guy that probably taught you PSY A01, maybe not, um, but I'm here for a different reason today, and that's to talk to you about research opportunities here in our Department of Psychology. Um, I know when I teach intro psych right from the first year, some students are interested in, in potentially working within a lab and gaining research experience. And I very often get them coming to me and saying, you know, how do I do that? How do I actually get into a lab? And so that's what this video is all about. Um, first of all, to tell you a little bit about the opportunities in our department, um, but then to give you some advice on the most appropriate way and the way that I think will bring the, the best success in terms of being able to actually land a spot in a lab. Okay, so let's get going and let's start here. All right. So this is a SharePoint site from our department. Um, I, I, I will, um, in the comments below this video, I will tell you how to get here if you want to get here, uh, because you'll see there's some useful, relevant stuff. And, and um, the first thing I wanna do is just focus on this table right here in the middle, because this table really lays out what these supervised study opportunities are. And, and that's often what we call them, supervised studies or the thesis course, because the idea of these courses is that it's a course, but you're not going to sit in a classroom and be lectured at. Instead, you are going to be hands-on involved in an ongoing research project. And so you're going to learn by doing. Um, and um, you know it's, it's really kind of fun and interesting that way, but you do get a credit at the end of the course. Um, you will see that for most of these, you see, in fact, all of these, you see that they're listed as full year courses, but worth half a credit. So the idea is it takes a while to, for a research research project to play out. And so the notion is you would usually begin these courses in the fall and you would do them over the fall and winter terms. You would be putting about half as much work into the course as you would for a normal term course, but you'll do that for two terms. So you're spreading the work out across two terms, which gives time for things like ethics reviews to be put in and, and experiments to be created and data to be collected and analyzed, etc. cetera. Um, and so that's why we need the time. Okay, so what are these opportunities? Well. From second year, uh, you see we have a Psi B90 course. Uh, and so this is the first potential step. And usually in this case, what would happen, and, and it's different. I, I, I don't wanna suggest there's a single way or a right way these will play out. Every professor is a little different. So I'm gonna give you a general idea, but the specifics will depend on the specific lab uh, and, the, and the supervisor that you're speaking with. But generally speaking, in a B90, you would likely become part of an ongoing research project. Uh, so it would be less about you know, your ideas and, and what you want to research, and it would be more about um, becoming part of potentially a team, maybe involving postdocs and graduate students that are already doing some research, uh, and you may be there assisting them, helping with data collection, helping with statistical analysis, helping to get materials created, et cetera, inputting data perhaps. Uh, and so, you know, to some extent, you're working more as a research assistant, probably in this B90 um, context, but you're seeing how research works. So you're right in the middle of it and you're interacting with the other researchers. And, and this is a great introduction. Um, okay. In third year, we have these courses, Psi C90 or C93. Now there's also a Neuro C90, C93. Uh, and these are the more formal supervised study projects. And this, in this case, you usually have your own sort of research project. Um, that's more typical. Now, it still may be the case that this is a research project sort of provided by the supervisor, maybe, you know, maybe it's something they wanted to, to um, do for a while and they sort of say, okay, this will be your project and, and you're in charge of overseeing this uh, project. But it is one where it's much more you and the supervisor typically uh, going through and, and um, designing the research, you know, creating the experiment, collecting the data, analyzing the data, and then ultimately you write a report at the end. In all of these, you're gonna write a report at the end of the course. Um, and so this is a little bit more intensive and it's a little bit more uh, about you, let's say. Uh, but that really comes to fruition in our D-level courses, our D98s. 
these are our honors thesis courses. And usually in this case, I mean, you're still going to have to do a project that aligns with your supervisor's interests. And I'll talk to you about that in a moment. Uh, but typically these projects are more you. Okay, it's, it's maybe you have an idea related to something you know your supervisor is interested in and you would like to, you know, research that idea. Um, so, so often it's, you know, sometimes it's the supervisor and the student that, that discuss and, and come to an idea together. Sometimes the student brings an idea to the supervisor that the supervisor feels comfortable supervising. Um, but it is still a little bit more the student. The student is expected to drive the research a whole lot more. In the D98 courses, there's also a classroom component. So you're going to classes, you're learning how to submit research ethics, how to do data analysis, how to present your data in, in good ways. Uh, and in fact, part of the thesis course is presenting your data as a poster um, at, at a year end event uh, and potentially presenting it as part of an undergraduate conference. So we take it sort of those next steps. OK, so, wow, that sounds great, right? All these opportunities. Well, yes, yes and no. Um, why do I say yes and no? Well, here's the hitch. There's a whole lot of you and there's only so many supervisors, right? And so um, it can be a challenge to get a supervisor to accept you into one of these courses. Um, and that is the challenge. I'm gonna talk about that in some detail in just a moment. Before I go there though, let me just say, you know, let's say you heard about these courses, let's say you were able to convince a supervisor um, to take you on as a student in one of them, then there's other, um, so just, just to give you a sense, this will talk to you a little bit about finding a supervisor. I'm going to talk to you about that as well. This will show you who is currently accepting students. This will give you the appropriate forms that you need. Um, and then a little bit more information about research involving humans or animals. So any of these things, you know, feel free to come to this site and, and check out this stuff to, to learn uh, a little bit more information and to get access to forms and such. Let me also say with all of these courses, they, there are prerequisites. So check out your course calendar, your YouTube TSC course calendar uh, to make sure you have the prerequisites before you approach a potential supervisor. Okay, that's sort of part one. Part one is the information about what's available. Now, part two is the juicier part. <laughs> so part two is, well, how do I convince a supervisor to take me on? And, you know, this comes back to a bigger issue, um, and at least in my mind, is that, you know, we really want to teach you some important skills at university. And perhaps one of the most important skills you can develop is the ability to pitch, to pitch ideas and to pitch yourself. You know, to be able to convince somebody that you would bring value to some situation. Um, it's a difficult skill. But it's one that if you get down well, um, it can provide you access to all sorts of opportunities. And so I really want to encourage you to think of this process of trying to land a supervisor as an opportunity to develop that skill. And you're going to develop it and work on it with practice. Okay, so fantastic. Let's begin here. Let's begin with the wrong way because 95% of people who appro approach potential supervisors do it the wrong way. And what is the wrong way? The wrong way happens like this. Somebody knocks on my door or sends me an email or has a virtual meeting with me and says, hey, hello, Professor Jordans, how are you? Um, I'm really interested in research and I wanna get some experience. Is there any chance I could work in your lab? And that's usually it, okay? stops right there. Now I want to tell you it's very underwhelming because when you're coming you know to the door and speaking to somebody what you really want to convince them is they want you in their lab. That wasn't very convincing. In fact I sometimes like to use this as a sort of joke to make students think of it a different way. You know imagine you went up to some random individual and you said hey you know one day I hope to be married and in a long-term relationship but I have no experience in relationships. You're not doing anything right now, right? Could, could we be in a relationship for a while so I could gain some skills that will prepare me for the future? What are you going to think, right? You're going to think, um, you only want to be in a relationship with me to learn, get skills you can take to the future. You don't care about 
me per se. I am just a means to an end. Um, when that's the impression you're giving, don't be surprised if the person isn't interested. Okay. Instead, you want to give them the interest. You want to give them the impression you really want that position in the lab. And how do you do that? Well, you do that by preparing. So. Where does it begin? It begins with your intro psych course, okay? Um, you've been exposed to a number of different ways of doing psychological research and to a number of different theor theories and, and results and etc. The first question you should ask yourself, question number one, what parts of the course did I find truly authentically interesting? You know, is there parts of the course where I just couldn't read enough? I couldn't learn enough about that topic. I really liked that topic. Those, you know, make a list of those topics. That's going to be guiding you in your subsequent search. Okay. So you now know what topics of psychology you're interested in. What do you do then? Well, you can go over here and I just, I just did a search for UTSC faculty in psychology and I came to this page and what you see is these are the, the, faculty in psychology. And for many of these people, should you click on their name, you will get more information about them, maybe just a little bit more information, but a little bit about their research interests. And often they will have a website. And so if you click on their website, well, now you can get a whole lot of detailed information uh, about what's going on in that lab. Uh, and so that can really let you know, oh, you know, this is what Adrian Nestor does. Do I find that interesting? Does that align with my interest? And etc. You can go through the various faculty members, and we've got a good a good chunk uh, of faculty members here. You can go through them, learn what they do, find those individuals who are working on research issues that align with your interest. Those are your potential supervisors. Okay, uh, these are people you can approach and say. I find your research really cool and you mean it because it's important that you mean it. Authenticity is the whole, you know, that's, that's what'll sell the pitch, honestly. Okay. So you found the individuals, let's say, well, maybe. So let's say, um, you know, let's say who knows, we can pick anybody here. I'll pick some, I'll pick Jonathan Kant. We'll say Jonathan Kant. And, and you're thinking, oh, I, I like what I've learned about Jonathan Kant. Uh, maybe I'd like to do research with him. I think I want to approach him uh, and ask. Okay, well now at least you know what he does, right? So you could already do a better pitch. You could already go to Jonathan and say, hello, Professor Kant. I know you do research in, in um, vision and attention and cognition, and that's something I find really and truly interesting. Cool, first, great, you, you've got a better start already, but how can you make it even better? Go to Google Scholar. So just search for Google Scholar, put in Jonathan Kant. You'll probably find him here. And, and so here he is uh, in Google Scholar. I recommend you hit this year button to order it from most recent back. And what these are, this is all of the papers that Jonathan has published um, from the most recent back you know, to earlier in his career. And so what I highly recommend is look at some of these most recent papers and take the time and read them, especially one if you see that, that Jonathan seems to be, it can be a little tricky sometimes where in authorship. So you see he's last here. Quite often that means he is the, the supervising uh, researcher. It can mean different things in, in different um, areas of psychology. So, so it's tricky, but read a paper or two and now, when you're talking to Jonathan, you can say, hello, Professor Kant. I know you do research on attention, et cetera, on, and, and ensemble processing. In fact, I read your most recent paper with Knox and Pratt. I thought it was really kind of cool the way you guys showed X or Y. I had a few thoughts about that. I would love to talk to you about it. And really, I would love the opportunity to, to work in your lab. Okay. What have you now shown Jonathan? Um, that you that you didn't show if you just knocked on the door and said you have any place. Well, you've shown them a that you know what he does. B that you're authentically interested in what he does. C that you were willing to do work just for this pitch. 
you know, just to talk to them. You are willing to take the time to read and think deeply about papers. And four, you've learned the way Jonathan talks about his research, the words he uses, the terms that are important. And to the extent that you can use that same language in speaking with him, he will, he will think more of you. He will think you understand, and, and that will make him more likely to say, okay, you know what, I think I can enjoy working with that student. And that's the real point I want to make here. It's not just about you. It's about we, okay? The faculty members spend a lot of time and energy supervising students. Um, and so we want to supervise students who love what they're doing and are, and are really interested in it that we can sort of geek out with when we're doing the research. That's what's in it for us, right? Um, that's our reward for the time we spend is the opportunity to see this new data and talk about it with a, with a researcher that's excited, um, think about what it might mean and the implications. And that's the Im impression that you give when you do that informed pitch, okay? So that's my overall story about strategy. You know, how do you do it? Let me now just, um, touch on this issue. When do you start doing this? Again, look at the research courses in your calendar. They all have prerequisites. So the first, so the first question is, well, make sure you have the prerequisites. Um, so if you're going to pitch yourself for a B90 in somebody's lab, you know, make sure you have the background you're supposed to have similarly with the C levels. Okay. But assuming you have that, assuming you've researched the faculty member, you're ready to do the pitch. When do you start? Start as soon as possible, okay? Um, you know, maybe in second year, maybe even in first year. Maybe you're going to start knocking on doors in first year. Now, you do this with a certain mindset, and that mindset is, I probably won't be able to land anything this year. What I am doing, the reason I am pitching myself this year is, well, for two reasons. One is to get practice. Let me try this. You know, if, if, if I'm unlikely to get it this year anyway because I'm a first year, well, why don't I use that as my first practice opportunities? Because I know I'm going to get better with practice. So I want to be good when my probability of landing something is higher. And so why don't I practice now when my probability is lower? right? So use this as my first attempt or two. So that's great. And so see it as that. This is me practicing that kind of pitch thing and seeing how well I can do. But the other thing is you're laying the groundwork for the future, okay? If you approach a faculty member and you say, and, you, and let's say you do a great pitch, you know, and the faculty member's impressed, but they say, but you're a first year student. Like, I'm sorry, I need to see more. I need to see a GPA in a certain range after you've done a number of courses. I really, I really would prefer you've taken the introduction to development course. Maybe I'm a developmental psychologist. So I might, you know, give you some reasons, which you can then very intelligently say, okay, cool. I understand completely, 100%. Heard exactly what you said. Um, and I'm going to, I, I want to work in your lab. And so what I'm going to do over the next year is, is fill in those holes. I'm going, to, I'm going to try to make myself more what you're looking for, okay? And then I'm going to come back. And when I come back next year, I'm going to be able to say, hey, remember me? I was here last year. Um, you suggested that, you know, to be more attractive as, as a potential research student for you, I should do the following things. And I've done those things and I'm still interested in working in your lab, etc. And you know, maybe it's the next year after that before maybe you have to come back and say, okay, you said, you know, last year that, that you were interested, but your lab was full. Um, and so I'm coming back. And you know, when you come back, that is just, you're not annoying the professor. You're telling that professor, I really want to be in your lab. And I'm listening to what you're asking me to do, and I'm doing it. Um, that's the way to kind of view it. You start early pitching yourself to become a better pitcher and to start laying the groundwork for research opportunities in the future. You may even get lucky. You may land something early and sometimes that happens. Um, but if it doesn't, no big deal. Don't go and say, oh, if I pitch and they say no, I'll feel embarrassed and stupid and whatever. Why would you feel embarrassed and stupid? You're being smart. You're getting the practice. You're learning how to do it well. Um, if they say no, 
okay, walk away and, and, and then maybe sit down and say, okay, what have I learned? What could I have done better? And maybe even send that professor an email um, and say, you know, I understand I can't work in your lab. That's perfectly cool. Is there anything I could have done better when I, when I chatted with you? Um, you know, ask for that feedback because that impresses the person too. Oh, you're somebody that wants to continue growing. All right, cool. All right, I went on a little longer than I expected to on this video, but but I but I really want to give you all like if you really want to land in a research lab, this is the process you should use. And if you do use that process, I am pretty sure you will ultimately land in a lab and that you will improve yourself as you do. You will have learned this skill of pitching yourself, which is critical when you suddenly now want to go to graduate school or, or something else. You have to learn how to kind of put yourself forward um, in, in a way that um, will provide you with opportunities. And this is all practice for that. Okay, so view it that way. Good luck. Um, I hope to, to come and see your research poster after your honors thesis and come talk to you about the research you've done. Um, I hope you enjoy your time here at, at UT Scarborough. If you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me, Steve Jordans at utoronto.ca, uh, but you can also just come by the department and uh, ask anybody you might uh, run into there. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.